Hey, hey, Blue Table fans! Good morning. It is a crisp winter day in Utah, and today we're going to be taking a look at an Orduk Warboss on Wyvern, or Orc Warboss on Wyvern. Scratch the U for those of you still playing the older versions of Warhammer Fantasy. And by the way, if you do and you need some of those old books, I'm the guy to look up because I have a whole bunch of them. So anyway, this is a model published by Games Workshop and we've modified it by adding these uh, wings from a Reaper Dragon, uh, one of their uh, white plastic models. I believe this is from the Bones line. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this guy from slightly different angles. And you know what? You know to be best would be to show what the normal model looks like. So to find the new rules for this for Age of Sigmar, you're going to need Grand Alliance Destruction, and which is a book. Last I knew it cost like 15 or 20 bucks. It's not. It's not that thick. It includes the old uh, um, orcs and goblins, and also the ogre kingdoms. So anyway, so this is the original model. Now, as you can see, the arms are different on this. It's got like one arm down on the ground. And when we got the kit, it actually was missing a wing. So we went ahead and did this conversion. Here's the rules for him, by the way. And so this client, he didn't specify the base type. So I was like, okay, you know, I don't want to just play a guessing game. Because if it's for Age of Sigmar, it has to go on an oval base. In fact, let me show you the base we were going to use. So this is the new bases that they publish. Let's look at them side by side so you can get an idea. So this would be what the new chariot base would look like. And it's got less total area on it. But I really like them. They're very elegant. Games Workshop is now publishing pre-fabricated sort of specialty bases with embossments on them. And I think they... they look really good. So anyway, uh, now the weird thing about this model is really in the game you play a chariot base typically facing forward. I don't think it has to be that way, but that's usually how people play it. So if you want this model for the bulk of the figures on the base, you've really got to put it sideways like this. So if it were me, I would just play it like that where the broad edge was the front. So anyway, as you can see, let's go ahead and see if we can't uh, zoom in on this. And again, I'm, do I'm, <laughs> I'm working this the best I can, guys. Okay, so yeah, tons of detail. It's got like this little uh, mannequin thing hanging down, which I think is really cool. Tons of detail on this, uh, on, the, on the banner too. Let's see if I can get... Uh, Get that get you to see that so it has this evil sons thing embossed on it there we go that's better hey that looks really nice uh severed empire general's head on there that looks really cool and lots of like skulls and chains and stuff i mean this guy is just he just evokes the classic age of warhammer fantasy just a really absolutely fantastic figure and i'm glad they're still they're still producing these these figures. And uh, as for Age of Sigmar, you know, you're starting to see a tournament scene emerge. And of course, as a miniatures painting studio, we get to see armies come through. And that's how I know, quote, what's good, unquote, because people are spending money to have it commissioned. And if people are, uh, you know, if, if it's a competitive player, then you know, obviously they've they've done their their research, and so it's it was interesting to see which armies would emerge, uh, which would emerge as sort of the 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 so-called top tier armies. But I don't think Age of Sigmar is done yet. I think there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of tweaking of the points costs. I always thought that Games Workshop or any game really would be best having a, a single published page on the internet that had the points costs on it and that the the so the rules would could be really long standing uh they would just tweak the points costs to make everything sort of the way that it should be in my mind the eldar codex for the 40k has been the first 
real uh, first book that's been balanced inside itself where you see a broad range of use of different units it's not like you know there's three four or five units out of 30 or 40 units that uh, are actually considered so much better than the rest of them and then about half of them you just never see on the tabletop anyway back to this auric war boss uh, this model's really cool. We did a lot on the base here, as you can see, and uh, you know, a, a little a little bit of cork goes goes a really long way. You know, maybe I should do autofocus when I do these videos. That might actually be better. I'm trying to do it myself. Well, guys, that's all I have to say. Um, thank you for tuning in, and I hope you got your inspiration for the day.